Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing? And yeah, I know, video, video, these things that I am supposed to be doing but apparently don't seem to be happening as often as I say that they're supposed to be happening. I can't help it, I'm busy, I've got lots of personal stuff that I'm getting on with and partner stuff and things like that. So. Unfortunately, you have to bear with me. I am trying to sort out different videos. I am going through different processes at this minute in time, but we're getting there. We're getting there. That little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Let's just move that out of the way. The title of the video, I'm sure, has grabbed some people's attention. This is the reason why married women cheat and why it's okay. Notice that. Why it's okay for women to cheat? Because they're trying to save their marriage. They're not trying to go off and follow a lust and an addiction that they have or try to satisfy their needs in a, you know, non-consensual way or consensual way or anything else like that. No, this is the way that they save the marriage. Because somehow, if they're not getting what they want sexually from their partnership, then apparently it's okay for them to fuck off and, you know, fuck off. But yet, yeah, roles reversed. And somehow the man is turning into a misogynist. And he's now turning into this person that just wants all the women that he can possibly ever want. And he never loved his wife to begin with or anything else like that. The main reason why I picked this story is the double standards. It's just completely and utterly the, the double standards. Before getting into the actual... A story that has been written by The Independent about this. And the actual book that has been stemmed from it. But we're not getting into the book because, you know, 15-20 minute video. But this is absolutely amazing to me. It really is. How now justification for cheating on your married partner. So, not even somebody that you've just, you know, met or been with for a couple of years or anything else like that. Somebody that you've actually taken the time, decided that you're going to get married, decided that you're going to spend the rest of your life with each other because that's technically what marriage is supposed to mean. You then say that it's okay to cheat on your married spouse without their approval and say that they're trying to save the marriage because of it. So, let's dive into this interesting let's just say that this interesting story and find out what levels of double standards that there actually are here and let's just carry on with it shall we Let, let's let's do this shall we As you can see, this is the main page that we're on at this minute in time. Women cheat because uh, they love their husbands and want to save their marriages, according to a new book. So, not even a new scientific study, not new to anything else like that. No, nothing that could back it up with any sort of facts or anything, but according to a new book. In other words, an opinion-based dribble that says that I want to go off and have my marriage, my family, but also go off and decide to sleep with whoever I want to without having repercussions. Again, imagine if this was a man saying this and how the feminists would be completely down on this, trying to say that it would be a case of you're just being misogynistic, you're taking advantage of women, you're going against women. Well, let's reverse it. You're taking advantage of men. You're blaming men for your inadequacies. You're blaming for men for the fact that you lust after other people. But let's continue and let's see if I'm actually wrong on this interesting development. There, let's go with that. My interpretation of what I think is going to happen and what's going to be said here. Let's, let's actually see what happens, shall we? Apparently, women cheat on their husbands out of love and the desire to save their marriages, according to a new book. So, uh, yeah, does that work for men, men going to want to cheat? Does that, does that work? Does it? So, Alice Walker, a Missouri State University professor, made a surprising claim in The Secret Lives of Cheating Wives. After a year of interviewing unfaithful women, 
Interesting. So you're interviewing unfaithful women and they're giving you their justification for cheating, which sounds very similar to when a man would say exactly the same thing. But yet somehow we're supposed to say that it's okay for women to do this because they generally have the best of ideas and the best of intentions to save their marriage. But if a man was saying that, oh, I only went off and had sex with that hooker or I had sex with your sister because I was trying to save my marriage, then somehow that's not the same as if a woman went off and slept with your brother. Because, you know, they were trying to save the marriage where, you know, the others, the men, you know, not so much. Not so much. But let's continue and see if it can be explained. So Walker spoke to more than 50 women aged 24 to 65 after placing a request for case studies on marriage dating site Ashley Madison and said she found that women who cheat typically do not want to leave their marriages, rather they are simply looking for sex and orgasms. Interesting. So, again, just to switch this again onto men, so if men are being sexually deprived in their relationship, for instance... For whatever reason, and it's her prerogative, she can do this, the partner doesn't want to give up the goose, so to speak, or have intercourse. For whatever reason. Again, completely up to them. But if a man was then to go off and look for a way of releasing that sexual tension and sexual urge that obviously women also have, why is it that the man is a misogynist? Why is it that the man is icky and horrible and is trying to break away the marriage? But yet, when women do it, they're not looking to break away from their nest egg. They're not looking to break away from their actual house and home and the love that they've decided to give to their partner. And the trust that their partner has decided to give unto them. But it's okay, because they're just looking for sex and orgasms. So it's all okay if they're just looking for sex and orgasms. I thought we were actually part at a point where we could say that, you know... The idea of cheating on a partner that decides to be in a completely and utterly monogamous relationship, i.e. marriage, that hasn't expressed any other way of them going off to see other people, put it plainly, somehow not cheating because they had the best of intentions of doing it. I wanted to sleep with your sister. I only wanted to do this to strengthen ourselves as a family unit. Doesn't really work that way, does it? Doesn't work that way. Speaking to The Sun about her findings, Walker said, More than half of the women I talked to, 26 to be precise, said, I'm in a sexist marriage, or I'm not having orgasm, and that's why I'm cheating. Interesting. So, instead of trying to sort out their actual relationship, and trying to get their partner to have intercourse, affection, that type of things, or trying to spice it up with having some toys or things like that thrown into it no i'm just going to go off and i'm going to cheat with somebody and i'm going to claim that it's to save our marriage even though if i can find somebody that's better that can give me my sexual orgasms and release that i want and the fact of having a physical relationship with this person that i'm cheating with because my partner at home doesn't know about it i would um probably think that they would you know end up leaving their partners if they could and saw that it was actually better. But hey, what do I know? So Walker's interest in the topic of why married women cheat was procured after reading a study that reviewed women in their 40s were most likely to cheat. So in other words, she set out to try and debunk another reason why people at a certain age, or women in a certain age, decide that they're going to go off and cheat. That didn't work very well, did it? That didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work at all. But, you know, doesn't really matter, does it? Because women. Knowing the majority of these women had no interest in finding a new mate at this age, Walker wanted to uncover why these women who claimed to love their husbands were cheating on them. So let's deconstruct that very, very quickly, shall we? Let's just have a quick look at this. Knowing the majority of these women who had no interest in finding a new mate at this age, you have no proof that they didn't want to find a new mate. You had no proof apart from them trying to say, well, you know, I didn't 
actually want to find a new partner. I just wanted to have a sexual release. But, you know, if it happened on the way, so what? But they had no interest in finding a new mate, just a sexual partner. Interesting, isn't it? How the separation seems to be that way now. But, you know, again, I suppose that's the conservative in me that's thinking that, you know, some traditions should be upheld. You know, like the sanctity of marriage after you decide that you're getting married. Maybe you should actually stick to the idea of being monogamous and true to your partner. And if you have issues, maybe sort it out with your partner. Not go and find sexual release in somebody else. And destroy your partner, regardless if it's a man or a woman in this case. So carrying on with the deconstruction of this point, Walker wanted to uncover why these women, who claim to love their husbands, were cheating on them. But you've already explained it. They wanted sexual gratification. That's it. Or they were throwing their... I want to say ball into the court again, or their hats into the court again. But let's just leave it as that. They wanted to throw their selves into the arena of if they can still pull, if they can still do the sex and everything else like that. I'm sure that this has a moment of uh, clarity to play on. But hey, again, they are just speculations at this minute in time. But that, that's... Let's stop with the deconstruction of that sentence for a little while. Let's, let's carry on. Let's carry on and see what they found. So she found that for many of the women, the choice to cheat was not a spontaneous one, but one made out of necessity. Yeah, I'm not getting sex anymore from my missus, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go decide to have a night out and I'm going to sleep with somebody that wants or shows interest in me just so I can get my rocks off. Does that work for when a man does it or does it only work for when a woman does it? And does it... Let, let's take the man and the woman out of it. Let, let's go to the relationship. You, you're now in a monogamous relationship. You have decided to get married. You haven't talked to your partner about going off and fulfilling your sexual needs and desires, if that's what we're going to presume this is. You've decided that you're going to do this by yourself. You're going to go out of your way. You're going to force yourself to try and have sex with somebody else that's not your partner. Why is it that that's not classified as cheating? And why is that trying to save your marriage? Because as soon as that you have cheated, regardless of if you think it's for a good place, man or woman, or good reasoning, man or woman, then you have broken the trust of your monogamous partner's relationship and trust in you. That means that the relationship is now always and forever will be strained and the person that you have treated on, man or woman, is always going to have a distrust or disdain for you when you go out by yourself and on your own. And that will put a strain on your relationship. So you deciding that you are actually going to try and save your relationship only condemns your relationship once that secret has been found out. And trust me, those types of secrets always get found out eventually. Let's carry on, shall we? Let's carry on. Discussing our unexpected discovery. Yes, unexpected to the point that she asked... People that were deciding to cheat on their husbands at that point. Why that they were cheating on their husbands. And if they were looking for a new mate. And they all said no, we're just doing it to get sex. Now, don't get me wrong. You could say that that is a complete and an honest answer. And probably 9 times out of 10 or maybe even 8 times out of 10. It, it probably is. They probably are looking for sex. And by proxy... Somebody that can satisfy the needs that most predate and predominant what they want and they need as they're safe, looked after and everything else like that. The problem then comes from the fact of you don't actually know that those are solely the reasons why she is cheating on her husband. But, you know, her unexpected discovery that says that women that want to cheat are doing it just to get their rocks off. Well, let's say that men are doing exactly the same thing. Is that okay? No? Well, it's not okay for you either just because you're a woman. So Walker said, It was very much this calculated, deliberate decision to get what they were missing from their marriages, which for them was orgasms. And they were really cheating to stay married, which was quite surprising. See, in psychology... We find that there are justifications for doing almost anything. 
the brain can find out ways of trying to say that this is logical because regardless of what it may be without going into horrendous territory the brain is an amazing thing at convincing the body especially the subconscious and the conscious what it wants what it wants what it needs and how to justify it an amazing thing really but i don't suppose that's actually coming into prominence this is a bias piece that was looking to debunk something that has been quite honestly put into place by herself saying that it is true of women mostly over the age of 40 going off and cheating i wonder how many people that were on that dating site the ashley site how many people have gone on and found that they were having sex and then actually left their partners now I wonder if she actually did that research, you know, the methodology to prove the fact that what these girls were saying were correct and not to be taken just at their word. I wonder if that's why it's called a book and not a peer-reviewed paper. But I'm not sure. So let's carry on before I lose my absolute mind on this one. Rather than giving in to sexual urges with men other than their husbands for fun, the majority of women Walker spoke to said they seek sexual relationships outside of their marriages because they are not having their physical needs met by their husbands and feel this is the only way to save their marriage. What about talking to your partner? By the way, I know that I've been going through this video now for probably around about 10 to 15 minutes-ish. And I've been saying how bad it is for men and how good it is for women in this instance, apparently. And how that they're only doing it to save their marriage, according to these women. But if you ask men the same thing, then they would be saying the same thing. I'm only doing it because I'm not getting sex at home. And if you get into the point where you're not having your needs met sexually and all the other bits and pieces, then you should split from your partner. You do not go off and cheat on your partner, break their trust, break the marriage, break the sanctity of their marriage in itself, and most importantly for the people that don't believe in sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of trust between the two people that are in a monogamous relationship. That's the point here. That they are breaking the trust of their partners while doing this on the pretense and the idea of they're doing it just to save their marriage. This is like a psychopath saying that I needed to go and kill these people because it was the only way to stop the Great Replacement. I know that I'm using a very hyped up analogy to be able to try and jog people's points on this and memories and brains, but it is that. I am doing this horrible thing to my partner because what I'm really trying to do is help our marriage. No, you're not. You're being selfish and you want to have sex with people. That is it. You are not doing this to save your marriage. Otherwise, you'd be talking to your partner about it. But hey, I suppose it doesn't really matter what I think, does it? Because Walker has talked to 60-something people and most of them are saying that they're doing it for the same reason. The justification of, I'm doing it to save my marriage and have sex. Yeah, okay. Just put men in this paragraph and see how many feminists would absolutely lose their shit for the advocation of this but let's let's carry on some revealed a decade decade long dry spell led them in search of orgasms elsewhere again talk to your partner find out why he's not sexually attracted to you anymore or why he's not sexually performing anymore has it something to do with age does he need some sort of prompting is he working too hard and vice versa if it's for women that are not wanting to have sex with you as well. Is it something that's going through them that they're going through a change or something else like that? Or is there some psychological reasons behind it? Don't just fucking go off and cheat on your partner. Talk to them. <sighs> yes, with the only other option being to leave their husbands. You've already decided that you are leaving your husbands by looking to have sexual gratification via other means. You are already breaking the trust of your relationship. You are looking for satisfaction, gratification outside of a relationship that you have. You are better off breaking the relationship up and not hurting your partner than having the pretense of saying, I'm doing this to help him. I'm doing this to help him to save our marriage. 
No, you're not. You're doing it just because you're selfish and you want to get your rocks off. That's, that's it. So one woman, Walker Interviews, said she made her decision when she realised taking care of yourself wasn't a good enough replacement for sex, while another wife said it took her kneeling on her knees sobbing for her to realise she had to cheat or I will leave him. You mean that you had to try and work out justifications for you to go and sleep with other people because you were finding yourself more attracted and needy to other people than you were to your own husband and partner? Let's be honest here, because that's what it is. And then going to the back, a point of going, well, taking care of yourself isn't always a good idea. Then in that case, you're okay with men cheating on you. You'd be okay on your husband cheating on you. I wonder if she bothered to ask them that. I wonder. I really do wonder if she actually asked these women, would you be okay if your partner did this to you? I would love to see what their reactions would be. I really would. I'd love to see what their reactions would be. So others revealed they sought sex elsewhere because their husbands couldn't physically give them what they needed because of health limitations and they didn't want resentment to ruin their marriages. So you didn't want resentment to ruin your marriage. But you would go out of your way to cheat on your husband, expecting your husband or hoping your husband would never find out. And if he did, would be to understand the reasons thing behind it and not give you resentment afterwards or even, in most cases, hatred for it. I'm sure that if you did have relationships where there wasn't physical needs and physical limitations stopping you from getting it, if you spoke to your partners, I can't say for everybody... But I would presume that there would be more partners if they couldn't physically give you something to saying it's okay than you going behind their back and doing it. Now, well, I probably wouldn't, but then I don't have the physical limitations. Some people would do, and if you were to come to them and honestly say, look, I love you, I want to be with you, but there are certain things you can't give me, I really need to get my rocks off. Would you be all right if I just go and do that, but I want to come home to you and stay home with you? Then I'm sure some, if not most, not all, would say, yeah, that's okay. Or some might even say, I would like to watch or, or whatever. I'm sure that there are people like that. But the point is, you are rationalizing going off and sleeping with other people and getting your needs met without even talking to your partners about it. You are doing it behind their backs. You are breaking your partner's trust. And if this was the opposite way round, you would be absolutely crying your eyes out saying that I have lost trust in my partner and how could he ever do this to me? And please don't say that, oh no, you wouldn't. Because let's be honest, you are so attached to the idea of the marriage, so attached to the idea of what you do and still have, that you didn't want to leave your partners. So if the roles were reversed, you would be able to say that, or think rather, that your husband was going off to cheat because they didn't love you anymore. And guess what? That's exactly the same way that a man would see it with you doing your infidelity. But hey, what the hell do I know? Surprisingly, many of the women Walker interviewed revealed that having their orgasms needs met made them better wives and better mothers. And their biggest concern was protecting their marriage. Yes, protecting their marriage, not keeping their marriage. Good choice of words there, isn't it? Very good choice of words. Protecting their marriage. Keeping their marriage protected. The reason why I say interesting for people that are not good at reading behind words, so to speak, or let me put what my interpretation is and let's see if you guys think the same way or not. Protecting the marriage isn't the same as keeping the marriage. If you wanted to keep the marriage, then you wouldn't have gone off and cheat, cheated. You would have actually have talked to your partner and decided the mutual beneficial way of being able to get what you want at the same time as being able to be trustworthy to your partner. Protecting the marriage says that you have something that you want to keep away from the marriage to keep what you actually have. That protection is stopping your partner from finding out that you cheated because you haven't told them what the actual problem is in your marriage. Hence why protecting is a very important noun at this point in time. Because it describes what you think you are doing for the marriage by not telling your partners. You are protecting your marriage. You are not saving your marriage. You are not 
helping your marriage. You are protecting the marriage that you have by not telling your partners. And just because you can get your rocks off with other people and get your sexual gratification and the ideas of having your emotional and physical needs met by somebody outside of the relationship doesn't give you better wife or wifely duties or witherly duties. I can't. I don't know what the word would be on that point. Or, or motherly duties. This, this doesn't do that. You are destroying the trust that your kids, that your partner has given in to you, running off and cheating on them, both your children and your husband, potentially destroying what you actually have, as in your house, your home, your work ethic, your workplace, if you work or if you don't work, the fact of your husband that loves you, so on and so forth, your kids that love you and so on and so forth, you are going to try and destroy that by going off and sleeping with other people to get your rocks off without talking to your partner about it beforehand. And I keep on reiterating this because it's fucking important that they have gone off to do this behind their partner's backs. They have gone off to do this with the justification in their mind that they have to, to save their marriage. But yet, when asked about it, they are protecting their marriage. The actual noun there is very, very important. It is describing what they think they are actually doing. And that's protecting their marriage by going off and sleeping with other people and then not telling their husbands that they are doing this. Again, roles reversed. If these women were to find out that their husbands have also been doing the dirty on them as well, I wonder how quickly it would change to you were not protecting the marriage, you just wanted to have sex with other women. I wonder. I wonder if she even bothered to ask them that. So, upon hearing the lengths the wives would go to, which included vetting their sexual partners to ensure they would be no emotional attachment to doing everything they could to make sure their husbands would never find out, all in an effort to keep their marriages from falling apart, Walker described the phenomenon as heartbreaking. I don't describe it as heartbreaking. I describe it as absolute lunacy. The idea of being able to try and protect your marriage by going off and sleeping with other people to somehow save your marriage is literally probably the definition of insanity. I'm going to completely break the trust that my partner has in me by going off and sleeping with other people. And then I'm going to lie and completely try and obfuscate from the point that I am doing this because I need to protect what I've already got. I need to protect my nest egg. I need to protect the home that I've made with the partner that I've decided I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Don't do that. If you are honestly unhappy in your marriage... And the only way of you getting happiness is by sleeping with other people. You do not have a marriage anymore. It is time for you to decide that you are going to have a mutual splitting of the relationship. Or, most importantly, and how you probably should approach this, you know, to start off with. Talk to your partner about what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Explain to them how you are feeling and how that you need certain needs met. And if you can't find a way of meeting them mutually that you are going to look for other ways of getting them met and see what happens. Now, if they decide that they're going to split because, you know, some people can have their egos hit and hit at that point, then so be it. You've made the right choice and it is what you need to have done. Because when you say that you are protecting your marriage in this instance, you're not protecting your marriage. Because if you were protecting your marriage, you'd be talking to your partner. You are protecting what you have. And the idea of what you have. But you've already broken and destroyed the marriage in trying to sleep with other people. And yes, that goes for men as well. This is not just a woman thing. If a man goes off and says exactly the same thing and does exactly the same thing, I think the same that they are going off to destroy their marriage, regardless of the justifications they think they are providing. If they don't talk to their partner and have mutual understanding and acceptance about what they are doing, then they are doing it behind the person's back. They are destroying the sanctity and trust that that person has and has given them. But those are just my two cents. Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that seems to be the end of that story. Yeah, it's not a great story, is it? 
to try and justify women being able to sleep with people because they're trying to save their marriage. But somehow, whenever a man has said that that's the reason why they're doing it, though I disbelieve that bit as well, by the way, it seems that that's not, not the way. Women would always say no, they're just being selfish and they should have talked to their partner about it. And if that's the way that they felt, they should have split. Well, shoes on the other foot now, darling. Maybe you should have a look at what you tell people to do and actually decide to live by what you say, not what you want you to be able to do. Though, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel. And if you like what I do, please share this video as much as possible. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. Take care, and I'll see you again hopefully a lot sooner than normal. Bye-bye for now. Take care.